This is a man the UFC tried to keep hidden for years. Who's that? Leon Edwards? I've heard of him. He's being ridiculed. People are saying, oh, he's not a big star. He's not a big draw. He's boring. You are what you are, bro. You're just a loser in life. Well, that's the weird thing. It's like you're the yeah. top of the food chain in terms of your skill level. Yeah. But you're not as known as you should be. You're the best kept secret in the division. I came from nothing can. Jamaica. On the surface, it's a tropical island paradise in the Caribbean. Millions of tourists each year come here for sun, sea, and sand to relax and enjoy the laid-back lifestyle. But appearances can be deceiving. 10.5% of the population is living in extreme poverty, meaning not even food they can afford. I was brought up in a wooden house with a zinc roof, you know, and I was in a war zone when I was a kid, you know. At the age of like 10, I could name at least 15, 20 people that's been killed that I've known. The reason? Ghettos. Anyone who sets foot here risks their life. Deadly gun battles and gang wars are just part of the daily routine. Unemployed young Jamaicans took over the streets of the slums to do battle. Their conflicts drew attention away from the desperate state of the Jamaican economy. My dad was the leader of, of, of a gang. In, in the era the world where, where I lived in. Brought me to the UK and that's the kind of person that he is and just want a better life for his kid and even though he's doing what he's doing. Like if, if he didn't do that, I'd probably been dead in Jamaica. Even though Birmingham was less dangerous than Jamaica, being so poor, Leon and his dad got involved in gangs in order to provide for his mum and younger brother. I knew that my mum was, wasn't very happy with it, you know what I mean? And, but I just couldn't see it like another way out because everyone around me is doing the same thing. A big gang culture like Johnson's and Burger Bars and those are the two main gangs in Birmingham back in the days. Three fatal shootings in as many weeks. Birmingham now has the highest concentration of gun crime in the country with three serious gun crime incidents here every single day. On the way home from school, you see if you're going to fight, you can get robbed daily, you can get bullied daily. And, the first year of school, someone got stabbed in my school. You know what I mean? That's that kind of school I went to. And the government's own crime survey estimates that some 60,000 people are stabbed or knifed in the UK every year, the equivalent of 160 a day, and that many of the attackers and the victims Whoa. are teenagers. I've been involved in, in knife crime, um, gang crimes and stuff like that from a young age, and I've lost many friends to being either stabbed or shot from doing it and from being, being a victim of it. Even just last year, I've lost one of my friends from getting stabbed on Father's Day in his neck, you know, and bled out. Do they sort of rule the streets, these gangs? Well, of course, they are the ruler because uh, they're young and they don't care about anything. The very... you, don't get, you don't get a sense of a sort of police sort of presence? They are not afraid of God. How can they be afraid of police? The kids I'm scared of, they will pull out a gun or a knife, just like that. Four, please. Mate, what's happened? It was a shooting. Is having to be restrained. You ever had somebody try to pull a knife out? Yeah, yeah. I used to have like a knife to school when I was young. Guys, for protection? protection? Yeah. How did you find out? Um, I was like 13 years old. When I, when I found out, I was sleeping in bed and I was in my mom. I just remember she getting a phone call and she's like, just start crying. I was like, I was like keeping my eyes closed though. It's just like crying, crying, like, no, no, he's not dead, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's what I found out. I just kept my eyes, I was like, pretend like, like I couldn't hear her, basically. I was like, kept my eyes shut, like, pretend like I was still sleeping, but I could hear her, like, crying over the phone. She woke me up, like, your dad um, just got killed. When he passed away, I think that's when he got more, like, rebellious towards life, right? The age was about 16, 17, my mum brought him to the gym. She was like, oh, you should give it a go. I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> like, cool, I'll give it a go. Just like keep, like, keep her happy, right? Yes. So I went, went up the stairs and how much was it a month? And it said £60 a month. That's a lot for a gym back then, even now. I knew she couldn't, she couldn't afford 60 quid a month to pay for gym membership. I was like, nah, I'm all right, I'm good, I, I, I don't want to do it. I was, like, I was like playing it down. I was like, nah, 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 you can do it. And MMA is what took me out of the life. I was spending so much time in the gym that I weren't hanging around in the street no more with my friends. The, the positive reinforcements kept me in the gym, even though I was getting my ass kicked because I, I was new to the gym. I'd go from in the morning to the night, I was 
media all day, I train in, in the morning, I chill all day in the gym, then I train again in, in, in the evening, you know, and that's all I was doing. This was when he met his coach, Dave Levan. So when you walked into that gym, when your mom told he was there? Yeah, I, we kind of got close as, as I said, about two, three years in. I started working more with him and we got more close. Um, he's got like a few sons as well, which is similar ages. Okay. I got close with his sons and yeah, from then just I adopted him like a, a father figure, you know. I look after them like if they was my sons and that's it, full stuff. He's a very private kind of person anyway. He's not, he's not a loud mouth. He's not a braggadocious kind of kid. He's the kind of kid that if he was in a room full of people, if nobody didn't speak to him, he'd be happy just sitting there on his own quietly. He's that kind of guy. When I was younger, I was, I was more angry. I was more like blaming the world for everything. Life is so difficult and challenging that unless you give it everything you have, the chances are very high that it will embitter you and then you'll be a force for darkness and not good. Look, you're good. If you stick to it, you can achieve something. So you just took to it, like yeah. striking and martial arts it seems like something that... Normal. My manager came to the gym one day and be like, uh, what do you think about Brazil? I was like, what about Brazil? <laughs> She's like, uh, what do you think about fighting Brazil? UFC just called and said, do you want you to find Brazil in like three weeks, three or four weeks? I was like, oh, perfect. He never puffed his chest out because he never spoke up. He wasn't a big draw in terms of personality. He was just a guy who did things the right way. I remember you walking to the octagon that night and there were booze in the Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was like a, a mad thing, right? I was like a hometown guy as well. He was like cheering on Gunny and William Meehan. Fighting at home, but being the villain. The first time on, on home soil. You know, he'd been neglected by the organization for a long time. Work. I don't think I've done nothing yet in the sport, you know. I don't think I've achieved what I've set out to achieve. The struggles I have to go through and just how far I've came in my life, that it has to be for a purpose. I believe I am the best fighter in the division. I need to prove that, I, I, and I haven't proved that yet. With the seven fight win streak, Leon was not getting the big fights he deserved. On the same night he beat Gunnar Nelson, he sees Jorge Masvidal backstage and pushes to solidify a date they can fight. An attempt that Masvidal did not respond kindly to. Put his hands up like this in some video and he walks towards me. Well, where I'm from, if you do that, you're gonna punch me in the face and that's not gonna happen, you know? You're Dorg, you're JV, Beta, you're, you are what you are, bro. You're just a loser in life, man. Say he doesn't wanna fight me, you know? So. We'll see. Why? I don't know. Everyone wants it. I want it. The USC wants it. Because you're not worth a training camp. I'll just fight you here. Because you're a scrub. And again, even though it was a good matchup given both their rankings in the division, Leon was pushed to the side. But for a brief period of time, it looked like things would turn for the better. Everything changed in March of 2020. This is my year when we were champion. Everything scheduled in to when I'm going to fight, when I'm going to fight for the belt. I was headlining O2 with Tyron Woodley. It's like sold out in like two minutes and I was looking forward to like going out there and, and performing. But just 500 kilometers away in a provincial city few of us have ever heard of, the deadliest threat to global stability in a generation is already heading our way. On the Sunday before the fight, the corona hit. To fight off. He kept getting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And then what happens? You can't fight Woodley. You can't fight for the belt. How about this guy, Hamza Chumayev, who during that time on Fight Island beats two guys in a matter of seconds? You got to fight him. Hmm, really? This guy's not even ranked. I'm ranked number three. No, no, you got to fight him. Why? This makes no sense. I was about, you just gave me a title shot. And now I'm fighting Hamza Chumayev? Nah, I'm not doing that. Okay, you're out of the rankings. We're removing you from the rankings. All right, fine, we'll make a deal. I'll fight Hamzat. Once he agrees to fight Hamzat. Canceled. Twice he agrees to fight Hamzat. 
canceled. Three times he agrees to fight Hamzat. Canceled. Let's let's look at the tweets. Leon Edwards will never be a UFC champion. Edwards will always be known as the guy that Masvidal punched in the face backstage and nothing more October of 2020. What else we got? Leon Edwards is more of a Bellator type fighter. If you ask me, he should go over there and crush cans for a living. And yet you still drive, and yet you're still pushing, and yet you're still willing to shrug off the fact UFC drop you out the rankings, yeah. shrug off the fact that you're not getting the fight you deserve at the time, yeah. and you still keep pushing forward. Bilal Muhammad, looking great, but can't get the victory, can't get the nod, can't get the shine, can't get over, why? 18 seconds of round number two due to an accidental eye poke to Muhammad. He cannot continue. Therefore, this main event has been declared a no decision. I apologize to Bilal. I didn't, I didn't mean to do it, you know. I'm just heartbroken. I don't know, I don't know what to say. No, <laughs> shit, man. No. That was... Don't you beat yourself up. Because of bad fortune, just things just haven't totally lined up correctly. Yep. Fights have fallen apart, injuries and sicknesses and a bunch of shit went down and you, you had been kind of ignored by a lot of fans. Like yep. a lot of people don't understand what level you're at. What now? What do I do now, you know? Then he gets a great opportunity against Nathan Diaz. Again, he can't get the victory. He can't get the victory in the people's eyes. It says victory here on the screen, but he can't be viewed as a victory. Why? Because in the last minute of the last round, Nate wobbles him, getting a moment that went viral. People didn't care that Leon dominated the fight and eventually won. They only saw the viral clip of Nate Diaz. And again, he can't get the rub. And again, he can't get butt over. And again, it's other people saying, nah, 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 nah. You go fight other guys. You go fight. Oh, okay, now you can fight Masvidal after he lost twice to the champion. Now you should go fight him. He is literally a fight away from fighting for the belt. He wins that fight. And now he's going backwards to fight Masvidal, who had two chances at the belt. And he agrees to fight him. What happens? No, the fight gets canceled. Leon's not a guy that's gone out there and talked again. He's always done his talking inside the octagon. And that's what you've got to respect about this guy. And as I said at the start of the video, he earned this title fight. He did it the old fashioned way. Didn't talk his way into it. He wasn't a big sensation. He wasn't a loud mouth. He didn't have fans clamoring everywhere. He did it through hard work, determination, staying the course and believing in himself. After the first round, my body just, I can't explain it, my body just like shut down. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Listen, listen, you better get angry now, Leon. Get too down. Come on, come on, you're letting him control you too much, son. You gotta get your hands going, Leon. You gotta get your hands going. Out of your face in like a lamb i went back to the corner and i said a little prayer to myself um yeah <laughs> one moment no problem i didn't want him to um go out like a lamb he got absolutely dominated in that whole fight <laughs> if you ever get away and you feel that you go down this little angel is going to whisper in your ear. He's going to say, Get up, you son of a bitch!
just want to say one thing. Y'all doubt to me so I couldn't do it. The all said I couldn't do it. Look at me now. I told you I'd do for you, mom. I told you I'd change your life. You're two years out, the pandemic, all of it. You all said I couldn't come back and do it. I was born in Jamaica with nothing. I live in a wooden shed, zinc roof. Look at me now. The champion of the world, ladies and gentlemen, Leon Edwards. Finally, the world corrects itself for Leon Edwards. Greetings, nerds and virgins.